We're focused on class-based policing with a single token bucket. But I'm gonna give you a little bit of a comparison with traffic shaping as well. In policing though, the tokens are generated by our, our software and they're added into the bucket. Think of it that way, a token bucket that's going to collect these tokens. And the token bucket limits the number of tokens to the available bandwidth, for example. And the committed information rate is calculated as a ratio of B sub C which is the bits, and T sub C, the second, so bits per second. To contrast that, shaping increments the token bucket at timed intervals using a bits per second value, and the shaper uses a formula of seconds equals bits divided by bits per second, and you come up with your seconds. So just as a comparison, but so you have your token bucket, and if there are tokens in it, you are allowed to move through. If you run into a situation where we've accumulated too many tokens, the excess tokens are actually discarded. So whatever your committed information rate is, think of that as your B sub C in your token bucket, anything in excess of that, we wind up discarding. In a dual bucket class-based policing environment, the first bucket fills up like normal, if, if you had a single bucket. We look at the committed information rate and the B sub C, and once we get to the point above that, in a dual bucket environment, that second bucket will kick in, and we will accumulate until we hit that B sub E uh, environment, and any excess at that point is usually discarded. So the way that this works is the dual bucket really gives us the ability to set up two different policies that can be applied to packets in the first bucket and then differently for packets in the second bucket that's accumulating. And if you think about traffic, speed limits and so forth, and what happens when we transmit traffic, it isn't always continuous. It's, you know, again, think back to a freeway. During rush hour, we may see a four lane freeway have all four lanes, you know, conforming to that traffic pretty steady. But then we may also see a situation where we have the HOV lane that may open up, might not have as many cars in it. And so that HOV lane, I think of as my exceed traffic, right? Because they're exceeding and they're going faster than the other traffic that is stuck in traffic. And so if they do speed and they violate, the law at that point, they will be discarded. Well, they'll be pulled over, right? So they'll be out of the race getting to work or getting home from work. So everything in bucket A or the first bucket conforms. If it doesn't, we look at the second token bucket for room. And if that doesn't work and we exceed it, typically on an exceed or a violate action, we discard. So that's the way our dual buckets are going to conform or work in our policing. Class-based policing can be implemented by using either a single or a double token bucket for metering. And when a violation action option is not specified in the MQC or the command line, then a single token bucket algorithm is used. So now when the violate action option is specified, though, then we get dual token buckets. So the first bucket is going to use the peak information rate, and the second token bucket is going to use the committed information rate. And so again, if we don't specify what the violate action is when we go above these buckets limits, we're only going to have a single bucket. But if we turn on that violate action, and that violate action may say drop, <laughs> then we are going to be turning on the dual bucket algorithm. So that will kick in and will allow us a second collection of tokens or bandwidth that's available to send our information.